All right, so we've got some great Jana questions here. And I wanna start with this question of how to decide if pursuing Jhana is a wise use of time versus other directions that we could take in our practice. Emily introduced this framework of the several ways to meditate. Um, and I think this framework is helpful because it does talk about the different directions that we can pursue in our practice in a kind of broad strokes way. And we can talk about different practices and the different results that they're kind of designed to lead to. And on the one hand, concentration, uh, the way we're talking about it in this framework is one of the several ways to meditate. The way I describe that practice is the practice of bringing attention to a single point, the result of which is unification. Now I want to contrast that just, just to give you an example of why this is a complex topic, because um, we could say, just focus on concentration practice, but let me take another example, which is uh, heartfulness as a way to meditate. So for heartfulness here, the practice as we describe it in Buddhist geeks is practice of heartfulness is the practice of inclining the mind toward opening the heart. The result of which is love. It's the result of doing heartfulness practice. Now, what exactly is the difference between unification or unity and love? <laughs> there is a practice called metta jhana in which you use metta as the loving kindness as the way into concentration. So these several ways to meditate, uh, on the one hand, they're useful for describing different flavors of meditation. But like I said, jhana, translation for jhana is meditation. And what form of meditation practice doesn't require some amount of concentration? Stability of attention. You could make an argument that the only one that doesn't is awareness. <laughs> uh, awareness meditation. The practice of simply being, the result of which isn't describable. On the other hand, you could say it does actually require, because just being is being focused also. So what I'm trying to get out here is you could sort of has, have a framework where you say, I want to just focus on these progressive states of meditative absorption called the jhanas. I want to learn how to access them, identify them, learn how to move between them. Uh, when I was training with Kenneth Folk on the jhanas, um, who's a, an excellent jhana teacher, uh, he taught me the five uh, jhana mastery skills, which I'll, I'll briefly mention. I won't go deep into them, but the, the five skills here are you want to be able to enter, abide, exit, call up, which is traditionally known as adverting to, you want to be able to advert, you want to call up the jhana, and then you want to reflect, you want to be able to reflect on it once you get out of it. So you want to call, you want to be able to call it up, you want to be able to enter it, you want to be able to abide in it, you want to be able to exit it, and you want to be able to reflect on it. And if you can do all of those things with all the jhanas, you, 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 you've mastered the jhanas, you know, at that whatever level of depth you're exploring them. Because like I said, there's a depth component as well to these things. You could get into them in daily life. Most people can. And for short bursts, you know, say minutes at a time or something, or you could be like hours, you know, on retreat uh, in these states. Um, so you could choose to focus on that training. And I would call that like training and this is the concentration meditation training. Why is that? Yeah how to decide if that's better than doing something else. Because what I will argue is that you're going to go through the same territory when you do other meditation stuff. Um, it's just going to have a slightly different flavor and look different because the, the object's different, what you're doing is different. And the point is a little bit different. Um, say with like, you're working with an inquiry question. What is this? That's a question that a lot of people, what is this? Well, if you keep coming back to the question, isn't that a concentration object as well? Uh, or if you're paying attention to the flow of experience and you're noting whatever you notice, seeing, thinking, pressure, touching, 
you could say, oh, that's not concentration because it's not a single object. Well, early Buddhism will argue with that and say, actually, it is a type of concentration. They have a name for it. They call it momentary concentration. Kanika samadhi is the Pali term where you're paying attention to the flow of experience is your object. So all forms of meditation seem to have this as a, as a focus. So I would say you can't avoid learning it. You have to learn how to, how to bring your attention somewhere and stabilize it and include more and more of whatever it is that you're paying attention to, to become more and more aware of it. The question for me is what is the best thing to do that with for you? What can you actually vibe with? What can you get some traction on? What's going to work for you to actually see some results because it works for you so that you get some momentum. You have some faith that this is actually doable and it, and, and you make progress. Now, of course, while you're doing the practice, you don't want to be thinking about making progress. It's important to differentiate the practice and the results, but we can't experience the results if we don't do the practice well or figure out what practice we should be doing. Um, so that's my kind of, yeah, answer to the question about uh, how to decide if pursuing jhana is a wise use of time. I think we have, we have to pursue jhana, but we don't have to pursue it as that, or we don't have to be thinking about doing jhana, but whatever practice you do, you'll be going through these states actually is, is what I will contend.